Well, the Golden Globes have ended. We now have winners and there has been some big news in the best adapted screenplay race. So I decided let's do a power rankings for best adapted screenplay today. And I think the most important thing that I want to talk about is how just drastically the best adapted screenplay race just changed because as of a few days ago, we have a ruling from the Academy themselves basically saying that Barbie, despite being campaigned for as a best original screenplay, will not be in that category and it will be indeed eligible for best adapted screenplay. So this award that people were already kind of thinking was Barbie going to win best original screenplay. It doesn't have a chance. It is now in best adapted screenplay with some heavy hitters. And I never understood this decision from Warner brothers to make Barbie an original screenplay. Listen, I get that the story is completely of its own, but last year glass onion, which is a completely separate story that knives out besides the Daniel Craig character being in the movie, it was still considered adapted because that character's existence and Barbie has elements and jokes that are all reliant on knowledge of Barbie one Barbie and Ken's relationship, who Alan is all these products being thrown. I mean, there's literally that scene where like the products freeze and they're like, Oh, not the Barbie blank, not the Barbie blank. Oh, you can't do that to the Barbie blank. That's an adapted screenplay. So I thought it was always silly that Warner brothers was trying to do it, but the reason they were going to do this and it's the reason no one's really saying, but gotta be honest here. The reason Barbie was running in best original screenplay and not adapted is because they thought they had a better chance at winning best original screenplay. If they thought this year that best adapted screenplay was a little weak and that if they put Barbie in there, they would win. Guess what? It would be considered best adapted screenplay and it would have never touched best original uh, screenplay. This was solely a decision to try and win it an Oscar and position itself in the best position. And now competing in best adapted screenplay, it's going to struggle. And this list is long. This adapted screenplay list is big. And we have quite a few titles here. Ones that I'm numbering actually as we go. So apologies for that. But I believe we have 16 titles. And we have a few categories here. So let's just kind of start with adapted screenplay and go from here. I have the first category and there's only one title for it. It, I call it RIP. And the reason I call it RIP is because this film will not get nominated. I predicted going zero. I don't know anyone who's been able to really see this film. I know some critics in like New York and LA got to see this film. I don't get to see this film until I think like January 20th. And it's just too late. There's not enough buzz. No one's talking about this movie because at this moment, this movie does not really exist. And the response that I have heard has been devices. I've heard some people be like, this movie's great. I've heard some people say this movie's good. And then I've heard some people are like, this movie's kind of a mess. And that is in the category of RIP because let's pay salutes to origin. Ava DuVernay's origin, just a film that at this moment, even if this film came out in two weeks and I loved it and like there was a bunch of critical reception that was like, yeah, you know, this film is worth praising and discussing and should be in conversation. Guess what? It's too late. That is the reality for Origins. That's why it's coming in at number 16, coming in at number 15. And I call this category, OK, Ben. And this is kind of the OK Boomer category, but this is essentially like if I had my nominees and I was picking categories, I would in include or at least try to get people being like well should we put this movie on the list and they'd be like okay ben sure you like you do you do that and that's the reality of this category because these are picks that i would pick and i just don't see that many other academy voters being like oh we should pick that and coming in at number 15 the perfect example of what i'm talking about is an incredible screenplay and an incredible adapted screenplay in how to blow up a pipeline one of the most thrilling films and just based on the title alone and the content of this film it is not getting in this race and that's why it's coming in at number 15 number 14 another one that i think uses the comic book medium to brilliant effects and is able to actually do something new and adapt and do everything that you'd want a screenplay to do is across the spider-verse and i can tell you at this moment across the spider-verse is not getting on this list despite how good it is and i'm gonna have to do a best animated feature soon enough because Honestly, at this moment, I don't know if Spider-Man's getting in. It, it's, don't, sorry, 
it is going to get in for sure for best animated feature. I thought a few months ago it was a lock to win. Rage just got dice here, so we'll have to come back to Across the Spider-Verse, but it's just not going to get a screenplay nomination. These films rarely do, and not only is it a superhero film, it's a superhero animated film. It's just, there's it's not happening, so that's why it's coming in at 14. Coming in at number 13, this one should be in the race, and I say it for every category, I feel like. I'm like, well, you know, this should be here, but it's not, and it's actually kind of annoying. Coming in at number 13, I have Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which I thought Kelly Freeman, Frigg, and the team who worked on Are You There, God? just did a wonderful job adapting this story. Young girl story, young teenage story, however you want to say it. This is a YA novel that is done so brilliantly. There's so much care, thought, and love put into this story. It is extremely funny. It changes some of the aspects of the book while staying completely true. This is everything that you want of an adapted screenplay that keeps the essence of the book and adapts where it needs to, to give it a more modern feel. I think Kelly Freeman Craig is an extremely talented person working in Hollywood, and I wish she was getting more recognition. That's why she's coming in on number 13 on this list, because again, if I was making this list and I had a top five, she'd be in my top five, not even a question. Coming in at number 12, and this one is kind of the pedigree of David Fincher and the killer comic book. I've never read. I believe it's a French graphic novel. And again, respect a lot of this artist and this uh, person in Hollywood in David Fincher. It's just the killer is what the killer is. And it's so heavily defined in genre that you're just not going to see it in this year's race. And that's why it's coming in number 12. I have two more ca uh, names to go through in this. Okay. Ben category coming in at number 11 is Blackberry, a film that I actually haven't talked much about outside of the Glenn Howerton performance. And to be honest, I think this is actually kind of the fanfare around this movie, giving it a better chance than I would rate it because I think the movie is special because of Glenn Howerton's performance in it. The screenplay is good. I find it a little conventional as I did some of the other aspects of this movie, but it's certainly sharply written and there is a lot to recommend here. And I think it is least deserving of being in the conversation. That's why it's coming in at number 11 in this category and coming in at number 10, a movie that again, I think if I had a best of list and I was able to vote, I think I'd have this one here. And that is number 10. It is based on the book Elvis and me written by Priscilla Presley. This is Sofia Coppola's Priscilla, a book to film adaptation that I found completely magnificent. I thought it brought all the story that Priscilla is trying to convey in that biography. It brings the essence of these characters alive and it re I wouldn't say reinvents it, but it is able to contextualize it in the context of a 2023 world, but also allowing it to exist in the world that uh, Priscilla knew in the 1960s and 1970s. I just think it's a wonderful piece of adaptation and I would personally have it in my top five. New year brings new year resolutions. And I can tell you one of mine's is hygiene. I really want to focus on my personal hygiene. And that's why I'm glad our friends over at Manscaped are introducing the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It's every man's cheat code to look good and feel good and turn the page on confidence this year. Whether you're looking to maintain a trim or goes with that clean shaven look, this trimmer has you covered. And I know what every man is thinking right now. I would never want to put a blade down there. That's just too scary. Well, the good thing is Manscaped's got you covered because they're equipped with two skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It's like having a personal stylist at your fingertips. And did I mention the best thing about Manscaped? This razor, you want to use it in the shower? Well, guess what? It's waterproof. Get yourself the MVP of 2024 Manscaped's Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra and get 20% off and free shipping with the code FILMSCHOOLDROP at manscaped.com. That is FILMSCHOOLDROP at manscaped.com because nothing says Happy New Year like a deal that leaves your balls and your budget feeling refreshed. So that is my OK Ben category, which brings us to number nine. And I just simply called this category, Is It Over? And I'm just pondering the question right now. Is it over for the color purple? I don't know. I actually cannot tell what this film is. As of a week ago, I was like, no, this film's definitely going to be in the top 10 for best picture nominations. Like it's going to get a handful of nominations. 
it's not really doing so well. I know it had missed out on the Golden Globes, but like that film came out late. But it's like missing out on like I think it missed out on BAFTA. It's been missing out on a lot of the critics ceremonies. It just feels like a film that was kind of destined to get nominations. And then when people saw it, they were a little lukewarm on the film. And now I'm just kind of posing the question, is it getting nominated? And does it deserve to? I don't actually know. So that's why I'm at this point, I am posing it at number nine because this category is so strong that I think maybe in another year where it was a little bit of a weaker category, you could see a film like this, this getting being a category where they're like, okay, you took the Broadway play, you adapted it. You were able to do some fresh new things with it. We'll, we'll give you the nomination and we want to make sure that we reward the color purple in certain aspects because maybe we're under awarding it in other categories. And this year, it's just, it's too packed to really be there. This next category, I had fun naming this one, and it's a quote from JFK. It's said by Donald Sutherland X, and it is, like Caesar, they are surrounded. And the reason I have this one here is because we have what I believe is two names. And these two names are people who should be in the conversation, or at least who seemingly are in the conversation and kind of come out of nowhere and just like shock everyone. And I want to point them out real quick because, and I have reasons for uh, doing this coming in at number eight, I am saying the zone. Nope. Sorry. I'm not saying that coming in at night. Number eight, I am saying society of the snow, which is J a Bayona's uh, film on Netflix. It just released, I believe it was January 4th on the streaming service. And there always seems to be a few of these like kind of wild ones. I believe Cold War got into this category in like 2018. There always seems to be a few of these films that people weren't necessarily expecting. And then all of a sudden it gets there. It has the international support. And if a few other films maybe underperform specifically like a zone of interest, or there is a really big international push and Netflix is really good about getting its films a lot of nominations. I just could see some fanfare going out for this category. And that's why I have it at number eight. I don't think it's going to happen, but this would be the one that people would hear. And they're like, wait, what just happened? What? And then number seven, I think they would be a little less surprising, but I feel like people are now starting to underrate it. Well, maybe about a month ago, people were overrating it because it had such good critical press when it was starting to come out. And then it just kind of got forgotten because people still haven't been able to see it. I still haven't been able to see it. I don't know when I'm going to be able to see this movie, which is too bad because I really want to see this movie. That's all of us strangers coming in at number seven. I feel like there is a film every year and I feel like this year it is going to be all of a stranger. Last year it was, uh, Oh my gosh, what's the film with Paul Mescal? People are yelling at me. Uh, the, the, uh, after sun, after sun, I, that small, that comes out right around Christmas or starts, you know, slow release post Christmas and people are going to see it. I think the one difference is uh, the after sun was able to stream on Christmas. I remember watching that movie at home at Christmas where, you know, all of us strangers maybe doesn't have that type of buzz, but it just feels like all of us strangers, maybe it's being a little bit underrated. So I wouldn't be shocked to have, and that's why I have it in the category like Caesar, they are surrounded, which leaves us with six, films and let's just talk about i think let's kind of go again i know sometimes i take it out of order but i think in this context is actually important let's go number one the category that i call goliath and everyone who's competing in this category i think at this moment is competing against oppenheimer which i'm not sure about i am actually not sure if everyone is competing against oppenheimer it feels like the front runner at this point and until i have more proof that it's not I'm going to keep it in here. Now, I think they're starting to become the question, does this mean Oppenheimer is going to be a big sweep and it's going to win every category? The answer might be very deservingly yes. And that's why I'm kind of having it at number one because there's a few other films here that I think are definitely in conversation and deserving of the award. But at this moment, it doesn't feel like any of the adapted screenplays are putting up a fight against the adaptation of American Prometheus and what this film achieves in adapting it's just going to be a hard one to go overcome. That's why at number one, I do have the Goliath being Oppenheimer, which leaves us with, I guess, what is that? Five more films we have to talk about. So let's talk about them real quick. And this category, which I have my number five and my number four in, or actually, is that correct? Sorry, it's my number six and my number five. I'm calling this category, should we have the conversation now? 
And I think we should start having the conversation now because there's only five slots and there seems to be six films. Five, six, five, six. That math does not add up. There can only be five nominations and there's six movies. So I'm seeing a lot of people being like, oh, this movie's going to get in and this movie's going to get in. How? How is that possible? There is only five slots and there are six movies. So let's talk about those six films in no order. We already mentioned Oppenheimer, which I have at my number one, but let's talk about the other ones. We have Barbie. We have Poor Things. We have American Fiction. We have Killers of the Flower Moon. And we have The Zone of Interest. So what are we going to do with this category? So let's have this conversation now because at my six and my five, I think this is where it is going to come. Actually, let's jump up. Let's jump to the number one contender I have, which is the number two on this list. I personally think if anything's beating Oppenheimer this year, I honestly think it's going to be American fiction, which is Cord Jefferson's screenplay. I just think that's the one that's a bit the most socially biting. I think it has the most elements friendly to the Academy. It's got this quick, sharp, comedic edge to it. It's got a young, new, exciting voice in filmmaking. They, the Academy doesn't really mind giving it to first time directors or anything like this. Like this is the category, I guess it's technically an original screenplay, but screenplay is where Jordan Peele got his Oscar. I j this just feels like a case where American fiction could do really well in it. And I feels like the one most likely to do it. So what are the other ones that I'm pretty sure are going to get nominated? I think killers of the flower moon has a chance to win this category. Even if I think it is a faint chance. Uh, David Graham's book, Killers of the Flower Moon, adapted by Martin Scorsese and his team for this film. I think this is also another wonderful piece of adaptation. And that's why I think it deserves to be in this conversation. But I also know some people had issues with how Killers of the Flower Moon was adapted. And I don't have those issues with the film. In fact, I actually think what they do really elevates the source material and is actually probably maybe a more faithful uh, adaptation to what actually happened to Molly uh, and the tribe in the early 1920s. But I do know, like I said, it has a little bit of hesitancy from some people. So that's why it's coming at number three, which leaves us three films, Zone of Interest, Barbie, and Poor Things. And I feel like Poor Things is just going to be a film that's going to be destined to get a lot of nominations. And that's why it's coming in my number four slot. I don't think it's going to win this category, but it does just certainly feel like a film that will get the nomination. It will have international support because I believe it's a Swedish book. I hope that's right. And yeah, I just, Poor Things is going to receive a lot of nominations. I'd be pretty shocked if it misses out on a best adapted screenplay, which leaves us two movies, two titles that we have to talk about. And here's how I am breaking it down because we only have a five slot left. This is the, would, this would be the last slot in this year's Academy Awards for best adapted screenplay. And is it going to the zone of interest or is it going to Barbie? And here is my logic. Barbie hurt itself a little bit by campaigning in the wrong category for basically most of this year. However, is Greta Gerwig going to get a director nod? And is Jonathan Glazer the other way? If he gets the director nod, does he get the adapted screenplay not so here's how i foresee this going out for this fifth spot i am giving it to barbie noah Baumbach and greta gerwig and my prediction at this moment is also greta gerwig will not get into the best director race jonathan glazer will we'll see if i'm right but i think the logic will be the consolation prize will be Jonathan Glazer, you get the director one, even though you miss out on best adapted screenplay. And Bombeck and Gerwig, you're going to get nominated for best adapted screenplay. However, director's tough this year, and you're just not going to make the cut. So that's my predictions. People aren't going to be happy with that, but that's just what I think. So let me know. Do you agree? Do you think that's what's realistically is going to happen, or do you think I'm an idiot? Let me know, and we'll be back soon with best original screenplay and best director coming at you sometime soon. Thank you all for watching. Take care.